boy Guapo TV, the damn tapping and all Charleston White versus DJ Academics. No, Charleston speaking on it. Yeah, DJ Academics was wrong for not basically standing on letting China Mac do an interview versus not letting him come up there and respond to China Mac. Child opinion about it. Let's hear what Charleston got to say. I thought the nigga was the real thoroughbred. Uh, I thought the nigga was our warriors. I thought. That seems to be a reoccurring thing, man. Because one thing about it, whether you like it or not, a lot of the shit you be saying is true. Well, it's, it's, it be factual. Uh, in, in, it's, in, just, it's just people don't want to uh, hear it. In, in my defense, homie, uh, I'm waking up with no strip. Mm. A rapper got a strip. He going in the booth, you know, he, he, he got his 16 bars. Uh, most comedians do the same set. Uh, I wake up every day and, and give away free comedy. Uh, I don't repeat the same shit every day. I don't wake up and just say people's names. Uh, I respond to people saying my name. Uh, I fuck with all celebrities, so I'm not just picking on no celebrities. Uh, until I became one, uh, I Stop the average person online with a mouth like Charleston White. It didn't matter to a Jay Z that he couldn't hear me. I'm so far up in the air, I don't hear niggas corny. What do you say to Nas? I'm in the air, I don't hear something corny. Yeah, I can't hear you. So in my mind, Boosie can't hear me when I say man and a nigga son. Oh, he can't hear me. When I say T.I. name, he can't hear me. I didn't know my voice was ringing that loud. So. When did you realize that? Oh, when they start responding to me. And, and they broke my heart, homie. Uh, I thought the rapping niggas was the real G, uh, good fella, godfather type niggas. I thought the nigga was the real thoroughbred. Uh, I thought the nigga was our warriors. I thought the nigga was our mental warriors uh, until here within the last 15 years and, and, and growing up and getting the real stories of, of, of who these people are. Uh, I grew up idolizing these niggas, homie. Uh, Nigga, Jay-Z words is like God to us sometimes. Tupac words is like Jesus and Michael Max. Nigga, get us through life. Get us through court cases. Uh, help us fix relationships. Make us feel bad at times. These niggas is like the Holy Spirit with their words. They convict us. They inspire us. Nigga, we don't know about Moet till these niggas tell us to drink Moet. Mm. <laughs> nigga, we don't know about Molly till these niggas enter us and do us to Molly's. We don't know about none of this shit, nigga, to these niggas go overseas and the white man get it to them or wherever they get it. We don't know nothing about our money. Yeah. We don't. Until they tell us. So we waiting on these niggas to tell us where the next 10 years we gonna do with our lives. So uh, when these niggas started responding to me, I'm saying, man, these niggas just like us. Damn, they feel it. These million are niggas. Oh, yeah. With all they got, these niggas really listening to me. And, uh, I know if you listen to a nigga, you can be playing on. The preacher play on everybody. If you listen, the politicians play because you listen. That's how they can play on. So if I catch a nigga listening, I'm gonna play on. Them. So uh, I start playing on these niggas. I start playing in, into everything that they don't like, but they accept. Snitching, telling, calling the cops. Yeah, so so I started. Uh, I just I just came to play. Uh, I'm the class clown online playing psychological game with niggas that's listening. Cause in my mind, uh, hoes want to hear it and niggas want to see it. <laughs> the hoes want to sit up listen to the preacher preach. Yeah. Nigga want to see a whole shake of ass. Let me see your titties, shove your pussy. Because we're excited by what we see. We ain't turned on by what we hear. So I'm saying, nigga, when did the niggas start getting turned on by what they hear? These niggas turned on by whether they offended or not. They turned on by. Yeah. And they can't cut me out. So when when T.I. responded, nigga T.I. was my favorite rapper. Boosie was my favorite rapper. Right. Jeezy was my favorite rapper. Tupac is my all-time favorite rapper. So uh, when I realized Tupac wasn't really a thug, mm. I could have been a greater I could have been a greater person if they would have told me the story about who he was when I was a kid. If somebody could have wrote me a book because I read everything Tupac. Uh, I studied all his lyrics. Now I'll tell you that part. 
I'm gonna let him finish going. He about to get into the stuff with academics too. Blind, I can't even really protect or defend myself. See, see, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. The I'm at this point. All these other platforms is giving him a place to speak it. Kyle, let me say it. So nobody would. If you, I won't play like I don't like you. <laughs> Everything ugly to me. Yeah, you're my everything. Everything about you. If you, so this is what I say, homie. I say some horrific, horrible things about black people every day online. Right. Nobody has a problem. Soon as I say something about another motherfucker, oh, he's mad for goddamn it. Dare so I'm saying to chime Matt, homie, why are you chiming in again? You didn't have nothing to say when all the Asian was saying, "Fuck that nigga Charleston." That's a racial slur, no matter how hip hop you want to be. When when it's a bunch of Asians saying nigga Charleston, nigga Charleston, and ain't nobody mad about this. Right. So guess what? Nigga, I got to defend my honor. Yeah. So I'm going to say some mean and hateful things <laughs> in my honor. <laughs> well, and so I said some mean and hateful things about Asian kids. Well, they said them in rap songs about our kids. So what I did, I changed rap lyrics, took the beat away. Took the rhyming words away and changed the color of the people and talked that to the Chinese people. Right. And they went in the uproar. So DJ Academics gave China Mac a four hour platform for him to talk down about me. So I'm saying to myself, well, shit, okay, allow me to rebut that. Allow me to get on this platform and explain too. The Houston News did a whole news story on huh? Charleston Asian hate rant. Maybe like I'm the whole, most horrible person in the world. But that Asian guy who shot that eight-year-old baby, homie, y'all ain't have nothing to say about that. So I'm saying, okay, let me play villain then. So I kept playing villain. And uh, DJ Academics pretended to, uh, because I'm saying, y'all hear me out. Call me up, DJ Academics. Let me do an interview and let me explain like you let Sean Mack explain all these other people giving detail. him a place to speak it. Kyle, let me say it. So nobody wouldn't give me one. So I created my own motherfucking platform. <laughs> they didn't like what I had to say. So uh, they actually called the FBI on me, right? So uh, this just no bullshit. So uh, whatever Asian politicians, uh, and I don't think Asian politicians are that powerful in the South. Uh, maybe in New York, but not in the South. Uh, I've never lived nowhere outside of the South. Uh, so all I know is black and white. Few Mexicans because I got Mexican babies. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know nothing about Puerto Ricans and Cubans, Haitians. I learned Haitians as a kid. And the Haitian people was the most fascinating to me out of all people. Not Africans, not blacks, Haitians, right? So, so I don't ignorant nigga. Man, fuck the Asians, fuck the niggas, fuck anybody. I represent the niggas. See, don't nobody say nothing about Tuka when they were smoking Tuka. Don't nobody say nothing about this. So, uh, I played villain, homie, and uh, DJ Academics couldn't take the pressure. Uh, he couldn't take the pressure, and he lied and said that uh, Live Nation canceled the tour. He got calls from Live Nation. I can understand the Asian politicians saying, hey, we don't want him here, uh, but I'm not here for the Asian people. The niggas were supposed to stand up and say, no, nah, nigga, we going to let you come over here to this juke joint. Right. And shout out to my guy, Kareem Blitz. Because my guy Kareem Bliss said, nah, homie, can't nobody stop you from coming from New York. I'm from New York. We're going to find a black spot that you can come to. Homie, we don't, we go back to the Negro Leagues in my mind. When niggas played in the park and we had some of the best baseball players in the Major League Baseball had to come watch the Negro League and then invite them to come on, come on, Robinson, come on, what we need these niggas. So I'm saying, nigga, we don't know. So in my mind, this is our opportunity in America to get behind Charleston White. Draw the line with the Asians because they got a federal hate bill we don't. See, I can't say, I can't, so if, so if China Mac was to attack me, I'm not protected under law. He is. Mm. If I was to have a show there because the Asians have a federal hate bill and I said hateful things online, I can't even really protect or defend myself. See, see you see what I'm saying? Mm. The black race was supposed to get with me and say, no, nah, we rocking with that nigga. What's go be, go be behind this because it ain't right. They can say nigga, we can't say chink and booty fake. Come on now. They can create Asian crip gangs to kill black gangs, but the Asian crip gangs don't kill other Asian gangs. There's no black gangs killing Asians. 
Black people are not waking up, projecting their crimes and hate and, and violence upon Asian. Niggas are killing niggas. Niggas ain't raping Asian people. They raping the little girls in our neighborhoods, their cousins, their nieces, the women they dating daughters. They ain't violating Asians. The most that's just happening to Asians is black community. Them bitches going there, running out, not paying, getting their nails done, and still nail polish. <laughs> that's the most. So when DJ Academics give this, give China Mac this platform, I'm saying, okay, he, we friends, my nigga. Yeah, let me explain myself. You know I'm not hateful. Even DJ Vlad said he's not. I mean, he's not hateful. So they know I'm not hateful. So uh, when he did that, homie, he made me believe. The live nation and nobody in this comedy world want to have anything to do with me. So I started doing my own comedy show. At that time, I had done like 16. And I had a big one that was in my hometown in Dallas. I had just got a billboard put up in Las Vegas or right in front of the MGM Grand. But he my buddy, so I'm thinking, man, I done fucked up. He got me thinking that they got so much power that they can counsel black people. He made me think that Asians and whoever, China, they got so much power they can cancel black people. And they can't. So was it academics? <laughs> These academics pulled the show. That's why he let me keep the money. Contracts for a while, the show wasn't canceled. That's why I never had to return the money. And he paid me up front and full. Right. They tried to ask for the money back, but I'm a nigga who read contracts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah they, they, his whoever tried to get the money, but I'm a nigga who read contracts, word for word, and understand contractual law. So, uh, I, I didn't have to return the money. Uh, he went on a longer rant as if, man, the people were saying they was looking at him fucked up for even wanting to do business with me. Like he even made a statement; they were even questioning his judgment of who. Why would he want to do business with this kind of guy? When right now, homie, I'm on Live Nation website page. Right now. Right now. It's contradicting. TK Kirkman made one phone call. Hey, man, I'm thinking about putting you on my Live Nation tour. I've been watching you for a couple years. We met in person like two, two men, uh, looked one another in the eye and, and shook hands, and that's our agreement because that agreement, a handshake is... It's, it's, yeah, oh, that's a bond under yeah. law in court. Especially somebody like TK, that's a legend. Yeah, so... Uh, so he made one phone call to Live Nation. He called me back and said, there, uh, a Live Nation representative is going to call you back to get your information. Oh, I get Live Nation checks right now. Mm. Oh. My checks got Live Nation on it. Oh. Yeah, so it definitely so, wasn't Live Nation. Nah, right. nah. So, so that hurt me, homie, because I thought we were friends. And, and, and the whole time, right now, today, I'm still looking at my phone, waiting for him to call me and tell me everything. He now, do y'all think DJ Academics wrong for that? But basically... He got in, he got in this man's pockets. I don't care what the situation it is. The internet, the internet. If you can make some money off the internet, go ahead and make your money, bro. Feed your family, feed your kids. But when sucker people that allow certain things that they feel is contradicting to what their own people get, not only in their own people way. And stop the success of their own people. But now all of that, you're not even defending your own people or even giving your own people a voice. But you go ahead, you know. I don't respect that. But at the same time, who am I? I just want to get y'all opinion and see what y'all think. But is Charleston wrong for feeling like that? Or is academics wrong? Because at the end of the day, academics could have just gave Charleston. Charleston even offered them the free interview. Could have gave Charleston an interview, let Charleston speak his mind on no opinion with China Mac, and it would have what it is. But at the same time, Charleston contradicts himself a lot with the things he said and do. So I know some people don't be want to put themselves in certain positions when it come down to even dealing with Charleston. But on the other hand, when you start messing with people's money and making people feel like certain people don't want to mess with them off the screen of something that you feel or did, and that's a problem. Academics pulling the show and then asking the man for the money back. That's crazy. I'm not giving you money back and you just pulled the show that we had a contract on for no reason. 
because of some way you felt about. And you ain't even let me speak on it. And we men, we got each other numbers. You could have called me. I could call you. You had something to say or felt some type of way before you got on the internet and said that you could have picked up and called me. But it is what it is, man. Like men, we're going to stand on that. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments. It's your boy Guapo TV and I'm out.